and thank you for joining us from all across Canada today. My name is Vishnu zaborski Breton, and I'm the Director of Communications with the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association. I'd like to welcome you all to this CPRA webinar called Online for Real-Time Websites to Support Your Recreation Operations. This is the third webinar uh, CPRA has hosted in 2013, and we plan to host at least one more this fall. So stay tuned to our website, www.cpra.ca, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for information on future, as well as some of the past webinars that CPRA has hosted. I'd like to introduce our presenter today, Agnes Croxford. Agnes is the manager of the National Recreation Database for the Leisure Information Network, or LIN, where she is responsible for the overall collection and database development, as well as all of the operations of the organization. Agnes is also responsible for the maintenance of the National Benefits Hub, so she's the perfect person for this uh, webinar today. Agnes is going to give uh, about a 10-minute presentation, um, as well as a demonstration of both of the databases. We'll have some time at the end for questions and answers, and during the presentation, you'll be invited to participate in polls that will pop up over the presentation slides. Uh, I'd like to thank the Leisure Information Network for providing us with the technical support today on today's call, um, and should you need any further assistance, Jennifer Pulce is on the call with us today. So now I'll turn things over to Agnes. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to have this opportunity to tell you about two websites slash databases that can be really helpful to you in your daily operations. We're going to um, look at the two databases. I'll do a live demo. But before I start that, I want to give you a little bit of background on the development of the two databases. We'll talk about some ways that uh, your organization might want to become involved in development and use of the database, um, and certainly about anything, any ways that you can use them uh, in your, as an individual. Uh, for the most part, everything I'm going to talk about today is free for you to use. Uh, wherever there is something that we charge for, I'll, I'll point that out. And those are all primarily related to services to your organization. So just before we start, for those of you who might not be familiar with LIN, uh, this, the Leisure Information Network is a national nonprofit organization established in 1995 to assist practitioners in sharing knowledge both within the leisure sector and across um, boundaries to other sectors. We often work in partnerships with other organizations to uh, expand the National Recreation Database and to provide those organizations with specific services to their members. Lynn is responsible for the development and ma maintenance of the National Recreation Database, and we are a partner in uh, the maintenance of the, the National Benefits Hub. So just to give you an idea of how these two uh, websites slash databases uh, fit together. The National Recreation Database is a collection of gray literature. That's the kind of unpublished, hard to find information that you typically would get from your colleagues. You certainly wouldn't find it in bookstores or um, in libraries. The, the content is submitted by practitioners such as yourselves. And it consists of practical resources like policies and procedures, forms and uh, checklists, job descriptions, and program success stories. Uh, everything that's listed in the database is in full text, and it's free. And it generally provides broad coverage of leisure, recreation, parks, and healthy living. The National Benefits Hub, on the other hand, is a collection of published research. We maintain it by ongoing monitoring of the press, and um, we appreciate having uh, notices from you of new research that you're aware of. It primarily consists of journal articles and research reports, and while the database is free for you to use, 
because much of the content listed there is copyrighted, we can't provide you with the full text of it, but we do to pr try to provide links to where you could purchase the full text. This database has a narrower focus on uh, the benefits um, of recreation, parks, arts, culture, sport, and active living. So we'll just focus on the, the National Recreation Database for a minute. Uh, the need for this kind of resource was first identified in 1987 as a part of the National Recreation Statement, where it was acknowledged that there was a need for the, rec the recreation and leisure sector to share their knowledge and expertise, reduce duplication of efforts, and um, as a means of encouraging interprovincial collaboration. It wasn't actually established until 1995 when Lynn was established, but it has been endorsed by the Interprovincial Sport and Recreation Council. So um, as of today, we have over 10,000 free full text resources in the database. Those would be the equivalent of documents. Um, additionally, there are news and events postings, job postings, and program success stories, which brings the total number of records in the database to over 24,000. About 65,000 individuals use the database annually. And if we were to put a conservative uh, value of $25 per document um, on the downloads, then the value of everything that's downloaded for free from the database would be over $3 million annually. It is a typical database that you can search and find resources, but it's much more than that. We use it to support the leisure sector in some of the major initiatives, such as the National Recreation Summit from 2011 and the, the ongoing National Recreation Agenda process right now. So you can find all of the resources from the summit and uh, those that are being created now uh, in the database. We also host conference presentations from uh, organizations working in recreation across the country. And um, it's uh, used to deliver content to other websites, such as Northern Links, which is a website focused uh, on uh, the needs of recreation practitioners in Aboriginal communities, um, the Canadian Active After School Portal, Communities in Bloom, and the Participation website. And the last uh, item in this list, uh, content delivered to other websites, is something that we do charge for. So let's go on to the Benefits Hub. Uh, the National Benefits Hub is a, a partnership project of the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association Canadian Parks and Recreation Association, and um, LIN. And it, is, it was funded under the um, uh, Rural Alberta Development Fund um, under ARPA's ACE Communities Project. So many of you may be familiar with the Benefits Catalog, uh, which was published in hard copy first in 1992 by Parks and Recreation Ontario. It was then updated in 1997 by PRO and CPRA. In 2009, when people started talking about updating it again, it seemed to make sense to convert it to an online format, which could be updated continually. It consists of evidence-based research from academic, government, and nonprofit organizations. And it currently contains over 1,000 research studies published since 1995. The bulk of the information that's listed online is actually after 1997. There are a few very um, core studies that we included going back to 1995. But the important thing to remember is that it doesn't replace the two hard copy versions. It updates them. 
And the intention of the Benefits Hub is to provide you with the evidence you need to continue or expand investment in recreation, sport, fitness, arts, culture, and parks. Also, to support the redesign of programs and services so you can ensure that potential benefits are actually delivered. The database is divided into four main categories, personal, social, economic, and environmental, environmental benefits. <clears throat> and uh, it's grouped around eight marketing messages which address the fact that recreation, sport, et cetera, are essential to personal health and key to balanced human development. They're essential to quality of life and place. They can help reduce uh, self-destructive or antisocial behavior, help to build strong families and communities. It can reduce health care, social service, and police costs. A small investment in um, one of these areas can mean a significant return on investment in your community. And they're essential to well-being and environmental and psychological survival. There are also in the database 50 specific outcome statements uh, assigned as appropriate to each record. I've provided a few examples here, but I think it will become much clearer to you when we actually look at the database, so we won't go into them in detail now. If you have any questions about anything that uh, I've said so far or about the upcoming demonstrations, you can contact me at acroxford at lynn.ca. So now I'm going to share my screen with you and do a uh, live demo. Uh, we'll start with the National Recreation Database. So when you come to the Lynn website, virtually everything you see here is actually generated from the, the National Recreation Database. And one way that you can see what's new is just to browse uh, down the web, the uh, home page. You'll see the latest uh, events that have been added to the database the latest news items that we've picked up from monitoring uh, electronic clipping services and press release services and so on, and the latest resources that have been added to the database. You can also see the latest program success stories that have been added. When you come to the site, there are uh, three calls to action. The most important one is just uh, to do a search, and um, the search that you see here works just like a Google search. It's searching the entire database, and you just type in your keywords. The results you'll get will be uh, a bit of everything, so you might get a, a program idea, a document, a news item or an event. A typical record for a document gives you all of the basic information about publisher, author, uh, an abstract, publication date, and then a link to the actual full text that you can download. About 60% of what's in the database is actually hosted on our own server, and the other 40% links out to other websites so if your organization were to submit something to the database, we can easily uh, just link to it if it's on your website and send traffic to you there. Now, when we did that search for children in nature, we got about 470 responses, which is really probably more than you want to deal with. So just like a Google search, if you put the um, the search terms in quotes, Google will then search uh, for this as a, as a phrase, and it will greatly reduce your results and increase the relevance. So now we have eight results that should all be very relevant to your search. 
we've provided other ways for you to search specific sections of the database. In this case, um, uh, search the National Recreation Database refers to searching just the documents that are in the database. And again, you can search um, just by keyword. You don't need to use quotes here because this is a much more specific search to begin with. And now we have 18 resources on children in nature. There will all be downloadable documents. The reason you get um, a few more than you did in the, uh, the second Google search is that we add keywords and topics and populations and uh, many more items of taxonomy to the records to make sure that we'll bring up everything related to the topic. The other way you can search the database is by uh, selecting a topic. And if you look down the list, you'll see we've got uh, a very extensive list of topics. Wherever you see the little book icon, it indicates that there are subtopics. And you could search either the main topic or the subtopic just by selecting it and clicking on the search button at the bottom of the page. And now we found 179 resources related to um, health promotion. Again, that's probably more than you want to deal with. So you can reduce that by adding in a population. So let's select um, older adults and go back and do the health promotion search again. Now we found 10 resources that will be very relevant to your search. Just a caution about using uh, population to narrow your search down. Um, you, could, you could end up eliminating resources that are relevant and useful to you because they don't specifically mention older adults. And you also need to remember, if you're going to continue searching, to set your search back to all, or uh, all of the subsequent searches will be limited to older adults. Um, I just want to point out a few ways that you can browse the database. We have an extensive collection of conference papers from across the country. I think we have over 40 organizations represented. Some uh, conferences going back 20 years, others uh, as recent as this spring. So you can, you can pick a, a conference and see um, the vast majority of the presentations that were made are there and you would be able to actually download a PDF of the uh, presentation slides. The other way you can use this collection is um, to browse through it. You, you would be able to see some of the, the hot topics that are popping up across the country, who's presenting on them, and what have been the trends over the years. Um, and there's been a lot that's changed in recreation, and you can certainly see a reflection of that by going through some of the, uh, the conference proceedings. We also have another area of the site um, where we gathered feature collections together. Now, all of these uh, conference presentations and anything that appears in these featured collections would um, come up in any of the searches I showed you but you may want to be able to just browse through them as well. And we have featured collections that are focused on uh, specific organizations like Communities in Bloom. So every year, the uh, communities that participate in the uh, competitions submit profiles of their communities. And you could come here and see what each of those communities has submitted. Uh, Communities in Bloom collects this, these on our behalf and sends them off to us each year. We also have a collection from uh, Leisure Directions West. 
This is a group of nine Western cities that meet biannually and share their expertise. They share uh, over 200 documents or resources every year, and they've agreed to um, supply them to us. Again, these would show up in any search you did, but we've, um, just as a courtesy, have supplied them with um, their own customized um, search interface to, to find their own documents. So you can see that they've um, supplied to us a pretty wide range of uh, municipal documents, very practical resources. And we're hoping that other municipalities will follow their lead and start to send us their documents on a regular, database, uh, regular uh, basis as well. I should just mention, uh, point out where you can find the National Recreation Agenda and Summit documents as well. Those are feature collections also. And then um, the last item I want to show you is our program success stories. This is a collection of uh, national, provincial, and local programs that have been running successfully. Uh, and it's just meant to help you see what's out there um, that you might want to implement in your own community. You could browse through the collection, but there are over 1,500 of them, so that would be a little tedious. Um, you can also browse just those programs that are being operated by high five registered organizations. Or you can do a, a keyword search of the database. And if I were just to do a search on gardening programs, um, you would see that we have 37 programs listed in here um, that are garden focused. A typical record uh, looks like this with um, the sponsor information, some contact information, a full description of the program, information about cost and sustainability, impact, and how it's been evaluated. And a link, uh, if there is one available, a link for more information. The graphic at the top just indicates that this came from Recreation Nova Scotia. If it was a high five registered organization, their logo would appear on the uh, record as well. Now, not all of the records will be this detailed because we do include new and innovative uh, programs just as a way of um, sparking uh, some new thinking for you. And obviously, those programs won't have been evaluated, um, so they'll have much less detail about them. I mentioned when uh, I started speaking uh, about the Lynn website that there are three calls to action. We've talked about searching. The other uh, important ones are um, we would very much like you to contribute to the database, either by sending a resource, posting an event or a news story, or sharing a program idea with us. And it's uh, very simple to do that. There's just a little uh, form for you to fill out. Give us your contact information, and we'll do the rest of the work. Um, we'll add all of the uh, additional information that the record requires, and we'll get back to you if we need further information. What kind of resources do we want? Well, basically anything that you think as a practitioner would be useful to your colleagues. So it could be a very um, extensive report, report that you've done. Um, it could be a survey result. Or it could be very simple material like checklists and uh, forms that you use. The last thing we encourage you to do when you come to the site is to subscribe to our listserv, Lynn News. Um, by doing this, you'll get a couple of uh, uh, items. You'll get our weekly e-bulletin, which uh, gives you a sampling of the new items that have been added to the website um, during the, the previous week. 
And you have the opportunity to ask questions from uh, your colleagues who are subscribed. There are about 2,200 of them. And we get um, typical requests would be for items like uh, policies on late pickup from children's programs or um, the recommendations for parks and trails maintenance, um, for example. So um, we encourage you to subscribe to the uh, listserv. So I think uh, that's enough about the National Recreation Database. Let's go to the National Benefits Hub now. So if you remember, this is a database of published research studies. Uh, it's updated weekly. And uh, on the home page, you'll see the latest uh, studies that have been added to the site. You'll also find uh, a, a short video, which is a quick review of the search and sort tips that I'm going to give you today. So again, the um, database is uh, divided into the personal, social, economic, and environmental benefits of recreation, parks, um, active living, arts, culture, and sport. And within those, there are um, subcategories such as prevention. And under those subcategories, there are outcome statements, such as reducing illness and disability. So if we have a look at that category, there are 36 entries there on how fitness and well-being reduce the incidence and severity of illness and disability. A typical record has a full source information. The key message or the nugget uh, that came out of the research, details about the purpose and the methods that were used for the study, and finally, the evidence that was uncovered. We do provide a link, as I mentioned earlier. In this case, it probably is to the full text of the document. But in most cases, uh, it's probably a link to where you can purchase the full text. Now, we hope that by giving you um, detailed information about purpose and methodology and the evidence, that you may not even need to go and purchase that document. You may have enough detail for what you're doing um, just to use what you find here. And many of the records have much more detailed uh, evidence uh, in them than this particular one. If you don't want to browse uh, the database, uh, you can search by keyword. And as in the uh, other uh, Google search we showed you, if you put your keywords in quotes, you'll get much more specific results. I believe if you searched mental health um, as individual terms, you'd get over 400 in en entries. Um, by putting them in quotes and searching as a phrase, we've got 103 entries on the benefits to mental health. You can make your search even more specific by choosing a category, uh, such as the personal benefits. Um, you could add in some topics. Um, so we might choose children uh, with disabilities, and then uh, add mental health back into the search. And now we've narrowed it down to 15 uh, research studies that discuss the personal benefits to children with disabilities with specific reference to mental health. And if we look at one of these records, um, you can see that each category and topic that's been assigned to the record are listed there, and they're all linked as are the outcome statements that have been assigned. And you could follow any one of these links for more information on that specific um, area. So if we choose enhancing quality of life, um, we now have 118 entries. So when you get a large set of results like this, you may want to sort them in some way. And you have several options. You could sort by title 
or by year. Um, if you sort by year, this will give you um, the list with the most recent studies at the top and then going back in time. You could also sort by country of origin, language, or the date it was added to the database. And then you can just go ahead and print your results. So before we leave the hub, I want to just show you a couple of items on the home page. You can sign up for the benefits eBlast. This is an occasional email um, that will give you a few examples of recent research added to the, to the database. It won't give you all of the recent additions. There are too many of them to do that. Um, but it will be a reminder to you that the database is being updated and you should remember to come back and search. There's also a place on the site where you could suggest um, research that should be added. This could be your own research or it could be just something that you came across um, in your surfing or in your uh, daily work. You don't need to worry about whether it's already here or not. We'll double check that. You just need to give us some basic information. Attach a file if you can or put the URL in the text and um, send it off to me and um, we'll do the rest of the work to get it uh, online. So the last thing I wanted to do today was to show you something uh, that we've just added to the CPRA website that comes from the Benefits Hub. This is a feed of the latest research that's been added. So it lists one um, research study uh, the most recently added one, and it will change every time we add a new one. We think that this is a great way uh, for anyone working in the leisure sector to promote the benefits of recreation and active living. And uh, it would be appropriate to put on uh, your own uh, municipal website or your own organization's website. We think it will also be of interest to private companies that work in the wellness sector. Um, it's, it's something that's very easy to add. It's just a few lines of code that get added to your website. And um, it can be customized um, according to uh, the area you want to promote. So here we're promoting uh, economic impact of, uh, of sport. But if you were working in wellness, it could be customized to show only new studies coming up on the benefits of uh, being active, for example. This is something that we would charge for, and um, the cost would depend on how customized you wanted it to be. So that's the end of, uh, of the session today. On behalf of Lynn and CPRA, I want to thank you for your attention and hope that you found this useful. If you have any questions about the actual content of uh, what I've shown you today, you can reach me at uh, the Lynn website, info at lin.ca. And if you have uh, questions or comments about the overall webinar series, you're very welcome to uh, contact CPRA at info at CPRA.ca. So once again, on behalf of CPRA, thank you for your attention today.